This idea of Ahad, one, there's one of the great writers on uh, Islamic theology in Pakistan, actually, uh, Rafi Uddin, Dr. Rafi Uddin, commenting on this surah, said something amazing. And I, I really appreciated it because I think for modern audiences, this kind of stuff needs to be said and heard. Allah created the human being with the knowledge of Himself. The human being knew already there is this highest ideal, Allah Azza wa Jal. And not just that there is a God and He created us and now we can do whatever we want. No, He's the Rabb, He's the Master. He's the, my goal in life is to do what He wants. This is my highest ideal. My greatest accomplishment ever can be that I become His slave. That would be the greatest honor I can have. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, His greatest honor, Subhan Ladi Asrabi, Abdihi. He becomes Abd of Allah. The slave of Allah is a great honor. That's the goal in life. And Allah pre-programmed that goal inside every single human being. But if you lose sight of that goal, it is like this, you know, you have this uh, thirst, this hunger inside you to fulfill that goal. Allah created you with that. But when your appetite is not filled with healthy food, what do you fill it with? If you don't get the right meal, are you going to say, I'm not going to eat at all? No. When a person is starving and there's no food of their preference, or there's no healthy food, there's even filth, barks of trees, will the human being still start chewing on that when, he's, when it comes to that? They will. When you lose sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that no longer is your goal, then necessarily you will find a replacement. Necessarily. It is necessary to have something you aspire towards. That is the mission of your life. So the one who has found Allah, what, become, what happens to them? In salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. It's very simple for them. The one who has really found Allah, their salah is for Allah, their sacrifice is for Allah, their life and their death is now for Allah. The way they live, the way they eat, the way they sleep, what they want to do with their life, their long-term goals, their short-term goals, what are they going to do with their kids, why are they getting an education, where are they going to work, everything is now for Allah, that is their goal. But for the one who doesn't have that goal, they have to find another goal. And in old times, there used to be idols, there used to be other religions, you find some other god. But in our times, it's become far more pathetic. Far more pathetic. Now you have someone who's obsessed with their body, and they're working out 18 hours a day. And their only goal in life, their only goal in life, is to just keep getting buffer and buffer. It's the only goal. Take stirrah and look sharp, stay on top. Keep in shape. Or there's this goal they set with their trainer. I gotta do this many reps. Or I gotta do this many push-ups. Or I gotta get bench press this many pounds, etc. That's their goal. That has become their ilah. For a person that their life has become about money. They're, have you met people? They cannot talk about anything except their work. They can't. Yeah, I work at this company. I do this, 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 this. And the moment they lose their job, they become suicidal. Because that's all they ever thought about. That's all they ever did with their life. That's all they ever did. That becomes their goal. For some people, it's their children. They live for their children. They do everything for their children. Day and night, they think about their children. There is no other thought running in their mind. There is no other goal before them than their children. That is all they run after. When you don't find him, you will find something else. You will find something else. And you will run after it. And you will give your life to it. And this is it. there is no exception among human beings. And today, it could be even a slacker. You could, and you could ask me, what about a slacker? You know those kids that play 20 hours of video games a day and don't get off the couch? Well, what is their goal? It is to entertain themselves. It is to fry their brain cells behind a screen. That is their ultimate goal. That is what they want to reach. And they're, they're working hard to attain it every day. Right? That's what it becomes. These are the psychological implications of understanding Tawheed. It is easy to say Allah is one. But is He one in my life? It is, is, he, is He the one for me? Or do I have some other one that I'm running after? Or some other thing that I've put before myself? Allah asked this question rhetorically. He says, مَا غَرَّكَ رَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمِ What deluded you from your gracious master? What was so important to you that you ran after? That you couldn't come after this? SubhanAllah. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So when he uses this word, هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ It's psychological implications. It's implications on our attitude towards Allah. And how we think about our life completely changes. Now there is nothing more important to me than making him happy. 
Nothing more important to me than him being pleased with me. Nothing more important to me than he forgiving me. Nothing more important than me that he would talk to me on the day of judgment telling me that I'm successful. He will look towards me. I will not be from the ones he turns away from. وَلَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah will not talk to them on the Day of Judgment. May Allah not make us from those people. These are some of the psychological implications of just internalizing ahad. Ahad. Just that word. What Allah is saying, subhanahu wa This is who Allah is. This is what He's supposed to do. And I want to conclude because it's time for salah with the following. This is the... I, I can't quote Iqbal because I'm terrible at Urdu. But I'll tell you the meaning of the, the verse. Okay? Though I like the verse myself. So it's poetry. But he says what used to be, he's talking about, it's a poem about Tawheed. It's a poem about Tawheed. And he says what used to be something that burned in the hearts of men, what burned in the hearts of men, is now a subject of abstract philosophical debate. That's what he says. Now what is Tawheed to us today? Debates. Discussions. Abstract discussions in, you know, uh, in theology that have no end to them. No end to them. But what it used to be was something that burned inside the hearts. Am I fulfilling the rights of Ahad yet? Am I doing justice to that Ahad yet? May Allah make us of the people of Tawheed. May Allah give us in our hearts what burnt, the likes of which burned in the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the Messenger of Allah and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een. We'll continue the dars on Surah Al-Ikhma.